I'm here in Copenhagen with 10,000 other people at the European Wind Energy Association annual event where I've been chairing sessions and uh, debating issues with all kinds of industry leaders from around the world. One thing that's clear is the scale and pace of innovation is increasing. The uh, commitment to wind energy is inescapable. The European Union is expecting that by 2050, over half of all the European Union energy will come from wind. Now, we might not see quite as much as that, but certainly 25 to 35 percent looks like being very realistic. One of the challenges about wind energy is what to do with the surplus wind energy that you generate and what you do to cover times when there isn't much wind. Now those are challenges that are being faced by Denmark, which is the highest proportion of uh, generated wind capacity of any country in the European Union. Of course it requires grids to allow electricity to flow between nations so these things can be balanced out on a regional basis. And those grids just don't really exist right now. The, uh, the amount of electricity traded across borders is only about 5% and it really needs to be replaced with a super grid running on DC current, which is when current runs from one direction to the other always in the same way, rather than AC, which changes direction 50 times every second. DC current, high voltage grids can transmit energy over two or three or four thousand miles without much energy loss. And that is the kind of grid that is needed for technologies such as solar, wind and other things to help balance regionally. We've seen massive growth in solar style installations in the European Union, especially in Germany and Italy, over the last two or three years. In fact, those two countries alone are responsible for 60% of the entire installations that are taking place worldwide for solar cells. These are solar voltaic cells rather than the solar cells which are used to heat water. While we can attempt to balance the amount of energy produced by wind uh, by generating uh, at quiet times with gas and at busy times by transmitting energy to countries that need it. The fact of the matter is that by 2020 our world is going to be desperately looking for solutions to allow large amounts of wind energy to be stored in another form on windy days. Without that it's hard to see how countries across the European Union can get to around 35 to 40 uh, percent generating from wind. Now one of the innovations that's most interesting here is the capacity to generate electricity and convert it into hydrogen and then to convert that hydrogen into methane and to pump the methane into the natural gas system, store it underground if you like or pump it into people's homes. That would allow us to transmit power on a regional basis because we already have a tremendously efficient gas grid that runs between nations from Moscow to Madrid, from London to Istanbul, and this means that we could use gas grids to transmit power at times when there's too much wind. How's it done? Well, it's simple chemistry, actually. Electricity used to separate hydrogen and oxygen to produce hydrogen gas and oxygen which is released into the atmosphere and hydrogen gas combined with carbon dioxide produces methane. Methane is a much more useful gas actually than hydrogen from the point of view of, of its uh, combustibility. It has a lot, of, a lot more energy per uh, cubic litre of liquid gas. It's much easier to store. It doesn't leak as much and as I say it's easier to transport through the existing gas grid system. One of the fastest ways to reduce carbon emissions it turns out is uh, in the short term anyway is to install new highly efficient gas using power stations. 